Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Did you know that Capture One has a totally free version of their application? It's called Capture One Express. It's actually very powerful, but it does have a couple shortcomings. In today's video, I'm going to go over everything you need to know about Capture One Express. Now today's video is not meant to be a full tutorial, it's just kind of an overview of Capture One Express. And right off the top, I want to talk about the shortcomings because I don't want you to watch this entire video and then find out that it's missing something that you absolutely need. First shortcoming, it only works with Fujifilm and or Sony cameras. They have a version for Sony, they have a version for Fujifilm. If you use any other model camera, then there is not a version of Capture One Express that will work for you. The second shortcoming, there's no spot removal tool. There's no tool that will allow you to remove sensor spots or dirt or anything that you want to get rid of. For example, on this image here, if I zoom in, you can see off in the distance there's these birds and they just look like little black smudges of dirt. I can't remove those. There's no tool available in Capture One Express to remove those birds. The third thing, and this maybe is the lesser of the three, is there's no layers capability at all. And that's probably why the spot removal tool isn't there, because the spot removal tool does utilize layers. So there's no layers, no spot removal tool, and it only works with Sony and or Fujifilm cameras. Now, if all of that still works for you, let's talk about Capture One Express. Uh, first of all, it looks very much like Capture One, and it has many of the same tools. First of all, as you look at the workspace, if you want to get some images into it, you import them. So over in the top left hand corner, there's an import button. You would click on that and you could navigate via this little drop down, choose the folder or the uh, memory card where your images are. And when you do, they'll pop up in here in the middle and then you could rename them. You could say where you want to import them to, whether you want to copy them to the new location, move them to the new location, or if you want to leave them right where they are and just add them to the Capture One catalog, you could do all that. You can make a backup copy as you're doing this. You could rename them. You also could add some metadata to it. For instance, I add my name and the city I live. Um, you could do some adjustments to them. So if you have some styles, they call them. Styles are presets. So if you want to add a develop style to the image as it's being imported, you could do that as well. And there's some file info for each of these as I click on them. And after import, do you want to eject the memory card or whatever? You have some control there. So once you get these images into Capture One and you navigate to the folder via this group over here, along here, along the topper groups, and I'll go over these in a moment, you can see that the far left group is my library. This is my Capture One library. And from here, I could go to the group of images or the folder of images that I just imported or ones that I imported prior. And I'm able to give them star ratings or color labels. And I could add keywords and things like that to them all in this group. They show up on the bottom along the film strip and you could click through them from there. And then it has a number of tools, a number of tools that are common to the full version of Capture One. And these tools aren't watered down at all. It's just missing some things. Um, let's start from the far right. First of all, with info, you could look at the metadata of the image here, uh, keywords and keyword library there. The next group over is you have a navigator window. You have sharpening tools, noise reduction tools, and clarity. Included in clarity is structure. Now, one thing about Capture One, for those of you that aren't familiar, the tools aren't um, just for one group. They could show up in more than one group. So you could have sharpening here, but you could also have sharpening in another group as well. Next to that detail tab is this color tab. And you could see that we have um, some, actually that isn't color. If you hover over them, yeah, that is color. So I'm right, I was starting to second guess myself. If you hover over anything or most anything in Capture One, you'll get a little tooltip 
that will tell you what that is. So this is the color group. I often call them tabs. You can see that you could uh, choose a profile from here. Um, there's white balance. Uh, there's the color editor. So this is HSL that choose saturation and lightness, um, or some people call it luminance, or you could convert it to black and white all in this tab. Next to that is the tone tab. Again, we have a histogram. We have exposure. This includes four different sliders. We have high dynamic range. This is highlight shadows, whites, and blacks. We have levels and we have curves. So you can see there's a lot of tools here. Next to that, this lens um, like group, we have a crop tool. We have, uh, you could add a grid to the image to help you compose it when you're cropping it. Uh, rotation and flip. You have lens corrections. You have purple fringing, or you could remove fringing, and vignetting. And then next to that, these are the styles, more or less the presets. What you could do is you could choose, let's say, a preset grouping, and you could just hover over them, and it will apply the preset temporarily to the image. So just hover over each of them, and you can see as I'm going through, it's applying different presets, or as they call them, styles. Next to that is Q. This is the quick group. Uh, this is where uh, most of the more common tools used are all grouped together. So most often you'll probably import your images and jump right to the Q group and you'll see there's white balance, exposure, high dynamic range, clarity, sharpening, crop, and rotation and flip. These are the tools you most often would use. And next to that is, we talked about that, this is your library. So there's where all the images are and I can navigate to where they are from there. Now let's stay in this Q group and let's actually process an image. I have one picked out here. This is an unprocessed uh, Fujifilm RAW file. It was shot with an X-T4. Now um, I will start with the Q group. I'm not going to do anything with the histogram or white balance right away. Uh, what I will do, I'm going to jump down to high dynamic range. Again, you don't have to go in order. You could jump around. I'm going to, because it's so dark, I obviously exposed for the sky. I'm going to open up the shadow. So I'll move that to the right and see where we stand once I do that. Now, it looks pretty decent. Now we'll bring down the highlights a little bit. Now I'm going to get a white or black point. What you could do is you could turn on the exposure warnings. They're right here. Turn those on. Then what it will happen is if you, let's say, move your white slider too far to the right, you'll start to get some red come in. You could see the red there. Let me turn up exposure a little more so you could see what I'm talking about. See that red come in? That means I'm clipping the highlights or click, clipping the whites. That means if I print it, uh, there's no ink put down on the paper at all. So there's no detail in those areas. So typically what you would like to do is not clip the highlights. So you would then bring the white slider down just to the point where it's not clipping anymore. Similarly, when you take the black slider and if you move it down and you start to go too far, you'll start to clip those shadows and you'll get blue uh, showing up. Now, if you print this, you'll just get black ink uh, put down on the paper and there won't be any detail. So you may want to back that off as well. Now, just one thing I'll say is just remember to turn those off because it may bother you later on when you get that red and black or blue coming on the image. So you could just turn that off when you're done. Uh, so I did that. Uh, let's maybe add a little contrast. The brightness control is really a mid-tone brightness control. That's really what it does. If you move it to the right, it will make your mid-tones brighter, but it won't affect the highlights or the shadows as much, especially if you move it to the left, it won't affect the shadows as much. So you could use that to move the mid-tones around. Saturation is right here, so we could increase the saturation. And... Below that, we have clarity, so we could add some clarity, maybe if you want to add some structure. Below that is sharpening, and we could add some sharpening like that. No, it's just a simple landscape image. It doesn't need to be super sharp. If I wanted to crop it, I could do so here, or I could go up to the top. Along the top is a little bit uh, tool well. You can see there's a crop tool here. If I click, we'll get the handles, and I could come in and crop it. Um, if you long press with the left mouse button, you'll see that there's other things available there. So you have different crop ratios. You could do like four by five or something like that. To the right of that is the straightening tool. Um, you simply activate that and draw along the horizon line. 
or if you have something that should be totally vertical or perfectly vertical in the image you could draw along that vertically and it will straighten the image again if you long press with the left mouse button you could see that you could rotate it freehand on rotate left rotate right as well um, to the right of that is white balance so this allows you to pick a white balance and you can see there's other tools there as well and to the far right of that if i long press with the left, left mouse button you can see i could copy the adjustments and then apply those adjustments to another image that is all done there now i didn't talk about i think about the far left that's just the select tool and nothing special there and typically you're in the hand tool or it's they call it the pan tool uh, but it has a hand cursor and if you want to zoom in you just double click on the image and you'll zoom in so that is that so i pretty much did everything i want to do with this q menu maybe i want to jump over to the color and maybe go to the color editor and let's uh do something with individual colors a little bit um, just try to make things maybe a little more tonal contrast Oops, we don't want that like that darken the sky a little bit things like that so you could come in and do different adjustments now let's just say i was done even though i'm really not the sky's way too blue the, <laughs> the colors are way a little bit off but let's just pretend yeah that's good and I want to share it. Uh, I want to save it to my computer and either print it or maybe I want to put it on Instagram or something like that. Well, that's when you export the image. And over here on the left-hand side, you see there's a little export button. You click on that and you'll get this export dialog box. From the far left, um, where do you want to export it to? Well, I'll export it to the desktop. If you want to export it to a different uh, spot, just choose the folder you want to export it to and then you'll be able to do it. How do you want to name it? I'm just going to use the original uh, image name. If you want to change it, you could click there and you could see that there's all these things you could add to the image name. If you want, you could add your name, the creator, stuff like that. You could just remove these by just hitting the uh, delete key or backspace key on your keyboard. I'm just going to stay with the image name so you could experiment with that. What format? JPEG, uh, JPEG Quick Proof, a TIFF, DNG, or PNG? Let's go with a JPEG. With 100% quality Adobe RGB ICC profile or sRGB. I think sRGB probably would be a better choice if I'm sharing it, let's say on Instagram. Uh, long edge would be, or you could just say, how do you want it fixed? So it'll be not crop it at all. It's going to be the full size image. Or do you want to give it a specific width and height or dimensions? Uh, in this case, I like using the long edge. And since I mentioned I'm going to save it to Instagram or email, you know end up posting it to instagram i'm going to use 1080 pixels because that's what instagram likes and after you export it do you want to open it in adobe photoshop or in your preview if you have a mac you could open it up in mac preview i'm just going to do none and respect the crop you did yeah of course if you cropped it you want to respect the crop most often and output sharpening if you're going to export it to print you may want to add a little bit of sharpening um, to it because that helps your print sometimes look a little better. But in this case, I don't. And when I do it, I just click export one image and you're able to do it. Now, as far as exporting is concerned, you don't have to export one image at a time. If I had a number of different images processed in the film strip and I wanted to export all of them, I could just select them by holding in the command or control key and clicking on each one or click on the first one in the series, then hold in the shift key and click on the last one in this series so they're all selected. And I'd be able then to print all of those at one time. So you're able to do batch printing. So the uh, last thing I think I'll talk about is if you want to see a before after. I have found a bug. Let's see if it, oh, if it happens. This little before after icon, if you click on it, you should see a before after even if you long press you should see a before after and you can see i'm not seeing it well the keyboard shortcut for that is the y key and if i hit the y key there's the before and you can see that it's you know it's colored now so it's active if i hit the y key again there's an after sometimes if you do that once it'll start to work but it's not so that is a bug if you want to see a before after hit the y key at least it's a bug on mac computers it may not be a bug on PCs. So I think you'll agree that it does have 
pretty much every tool you're probably going to need for most of your images, except for that spot removal tool. And of course, if you don't shoot Sony or Fujifilm, they don't have a version for you, unfortunately. Now, in the description below this video, I mean, it's just CaptureOne.com. Just go there and you'll find it. But I'll have a link directly to the part of CaptureOne.com that has the Express version so you could try it out. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.